Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to some more 25 Days of Go. I'm Dwyron, and today, of course, as we've been doing for a while now, we're going to look at some more proverbs. This one is actually going to aid you in your attacking. This proverb says, let's see, how do I want to set this up today? Um, I don't know. Let's do something a little bit more unusual. Well, then again, yeah, I'll set it up this way, I guess, huh? Something like this. Let's get a mini Chinese here. So we're gonna have our opponent back off. Something like that. Yeah, something like this, something like this. Now, uh, when dealing with the mini Chinese Fuseki, obviously we like to split on this particular side first and foremost. Sadly, that's not always something that our opponent is going to do. Sometimes they're going to do something like, uh, let's say this, let's say they attack. And with the attack, occasionally, you know, you can go and play elsewhere. You can take the largest points, you can enclose, you can do a whole bunch of different things here. However, 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 uh, today we're gonna be looking over the difference between when we want to simply play a one space jump, like so, and when we should play the small knight instead. And the rule of thumb is thus. If we are simply running away for defense, then we probably want to just play the one point jump. However, if on the other hand, we are trying to attack, this attack is not quite as severe as this one. And here, let's examine why really, really easy a nice fundamental position. Let's say, regardless of whatever we do, our opponent is going to respond thus, either by playing here or by playing here. If we attack this way and our opponent responds, where's our follow-up going to be? I think at best, we're looking for something like this, because if we do anything else, we're kind of opening ourselves up to like cutting potential and complicated stuff in a really, really deep reading, right? So we don't want to do any of that. We don't want to do that. So if we play here, our follow-up is going to be here, correct? Because this is like we're trying to put lots lots of pressure on our opponent. If we play here, our follow-up could be here, it could be here, could be a lot of different places, but you can see the reach is extending. And if we have a move on the board, you can see the difference between like something like this and something like this is actually quite large. It's actually quite large because a move like this, for example, is not only threatening to be faster, trying to expand this area quicker, but it's also putting a lot of pressure on subsequent moves, such as how much odd G is over here and even begging the question, can I lean on here and expand even further? Since this is only a three point extension, it might be a little bit difficult to, uh, to actually come through, right? So we can see that the small knight here is much faster in trying to attack than just the one point jump. However, I do want to point out since it is now that was example. That was an example of us playing and assuming that our opponent was always going to play the same thing regardless. Like if we play here, our opponent's going to probably play here to kill off this one stone. Um, however, let's assume that's not true at all. Let's assume White actually is going to change his response based on how we play, which is a fair assumption given that Go is a rather fluid game. Well, here you can see that we're kind of letting White build out as well. And if we don't continue to play here, we might see this side expanded a lot faster than we can expand this side, because this side's kind of curving in on itself now, right? Here, our opponent cannot possibly play that way. Here, if our opponent plays the exact same thing, that's an attachment move. And we know from previous uh, proverbs that if we get attached, we're probably going to play the Hane. And from there, we are now getting a lot more than our opponent because we are here beyond the halfway mark on the board. 
So not only does this build up this area faster, it also kind of contains white's responses because if white wants to play here, then it's an attachment move is going to make us stronger. We want that strength for this side anyway. If our opponent plays here, well, that's okay too because he's not dealt with this one stone. There's still cutting points and we can still attach to that even, even now and keep building up really, really quickly. If we play this on the other hand, we don't really know what our opponent's going to do. Maybe the response stays the same, but there's a lot more area here, a lot more freedom to uh, work with for white. Maybe white just jumps up and tries to get more for himself as a result. Now you might say, but wait, if we play here, can't we be cut? Because this is a small knight. And we know that we're not going to cut this way because we've learned about that already earlier in the month. That this would be the dumbest way possible for us to actually cut this off. Uh, because right now, this isn't just a fight. This is those two stones being killed. So that's a bad way of, a bit of a bad way of trying to poke a fight here. So instead, we are going to cut from here. We're going to cut at the waist, as we learned. And the problem with doing so, two groups. Two groups, and one of them is already pincered, isn't it? Looks like it. Looks like it. So whatever you thought you learned here, not gonna be very useful is it because we need to go back and answer this but we need to answer these two stones as well we need to defend them both simultaneously we need to both jump out and jump over at the same time and the minute we can't do that the second we can't do that we're gonna be in trouble we're gonna be in a lot of trouble the minute we can't respond to both at once so we don't have to worry about the small knight here because we didn't have to worry about these stones. We didn't have to worry about these stones. White has to worry about this stone and both of these uh, groups. Not a good position for white. Not a good position for white at all. So the question then is, when on earth would you want to simply jump straight up? And let's go look at that. Let's go look at that. I'm going to borrow, as I so often do, uh, from just the orthodox Fuseki today. And I'm going to have white split this the old-fashioned way. Something like this, maybe. Um, I do not recommend this. I think it's an inferior move. Do not play the two space over the three. But for the sake of argument, we are going to play three. Here is where you may not want to play the small knight because if we try to defend here with the small knight this is a really great opportunity to consider attacking and i'm even going to make this even easier right now to see this we're going to assume that the, the ladder is not a problem if we cut now with what we know What we have is an issue, the same issue that White had a moment ago, or was it White? Yeah, White had a moment ago. We want to look after these stones, and we want to look after these stones at the same time, and we simply can't do it. We value, we judged that this group needed another move, so we had the bright idea to play uh, the fast move, the small knight, to try and get out and attack. But because it's a small knight move, and it, it could be cut. So when we actually have something to worry about, when we're actually trying to defend ourselves, and we're trying to run away, playing this small knight might not be a good idea. Because if it gets cut, you got two groups on your hands, and you don't usually want two weak groups on your hands, so you don't want to do that. In this case, in this case, the superior move, whoops, there we go. The superior move, regardless of if this is on the board or not, is to simply jump out. If we simply jump out, we're nicely defended. 
our opponent can't really try to cut us very well. I mean, of course, we all know that there's the peep line behind, right? But, you know, aside from that, we don't have anything to worry about. Let's go ahead and change things just a little bit again and have some fun here. Let's go ahead and make this a two-space extension. Let's get ourselves an extension as well. So we enclose white played large, uh, black attacked base, base. And now we're simply going to try and settle something here. By the way, not a proverb, but don't ignore this. A lot of you do. Stop doing that. I've seen your games. Some of you don't feel like you need to play this move. You do. So we play there. Now here's an interesting problem. Here's an interesting problem. What do we play now? What do we play? Because if we're valuing that we only need to defend, then our move should be here. If we're valuing that we can be that we're stronger than that, we don't have to simply defend. Our move can be here. Which one do you think we need to play right now? Which one should you play? Because they're both two space extensions. Two space extension in of itself, not a lie for either player. Strong side on, on the right. So what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? You know? In this case, you actually do want to play here. Because these two stones are weaker than these four stones. So even if we cut, like so, uh, do we do this or this? I forget. I'm not laddering. You could say that you could ladder, but if you ladder, then you're just letting your opponent steal your base and live immediately, so we're not interested in laddering. I think we play here, right? I don't think we want to play here. I don't know. I think of argument doesn't really matter either way. But you can see here that white has to be careful, because if white tries to, let's just say white tries to jump out, run the stone, well, it looks like black just completely enclosed you. So whatever this move here is doing, this move has to be worth, this move has to be worth being completely enclosed. And white's going to have to not die right now. White has to not die and make this move be valuable enough to be worth being completely enclosed. Probably, probably tough, probably tough. So from here, chances are we're going to maybe defend ourselves as well. Only this time we're going to borrow another proverb and we're probably going to lean against the strong corner in order to try to get out. Because if, uh, let's say, black wants to hit our stone, make us stronger, something like this, you'd play large, but who cares? Then now that we're stronger, maybe we can actually go back and cut this. Because we're no longer so worried, we no longer can get surrounded, then we can go back and cut the small knight at the waist, as we've learned previously. See how all these kind of these proverbs kind of begin linking together? See how that works? I think you see how that works. Let's get one more example here. I feel this is this video is probably gonna be long. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry, but this one's actually an interesting problem. So let's say we jump. Jumped again. The question then becomes, ah, when do we start jumping? Like now that our opponent's strong, we probably don't want to play here because we can see that we're behind enemy lines if we could cut, right? So we're still in defensive mode now that we lost our attack opportunity because this is a pretty strong base. Here, we're no longer behind enemy lines. So we can actually be a bit more aggressive here if we want it to be. And this would become a lot more easy to see, the profit value for this, if we have some extra stones on the field. Let's say we've got something like this. Let's say we've got something like this. Now you can see that we're also kind of laying claim to this area, right? We're leaning to build this area up potentially. So you can see the extra value besides just this, because there's this. This is going to be Gote, complete, complete utter Gote. 
This might not be because it's also threatening to completely do the enclose again. So we're kind of growing the area, but this area might be built as well. So now we can go back to playing here because this is no longer behind enemy lines as we saw here. So we can go play the small knight and start attacking here. We've judged our group is strong enough. We're not going to be surrounded. We can go attack. So I hope this little uh, look into the proverb, uh, you want to do one space to defend, maybe the small knight to attack, to be aggressive. Hope you understand the difference of why you use one over the other and when you use one or the other, and uh, have fun experimenting with those in your games. So that's it for today. Hope you're enjoying the series. And as always, I will of course see you guys tomorrow. Take care, everyone.